welcome everyone to Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews. Today with a very special episode here with Thomas, because this is a small sneak preview of the all-new Lamborghini Aventador Super Veloce. It's a special model because the Aventador has been running since 2011, usually has 700 horsepower from a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12, crazy enough, but this one has not only 700 but 750 horsepower, even more, so it's the strongest Lamborghini ever. And furthermore, this very car is also even 50 kilograms lighter. This carbon fiber monocoque chassis, which is behind this surface here, usually it's about 1,575 kilograms, now it's 1,525 kilograms. So actually, these are the two main facts about this special edition here. One out of 600 cars, so 50 kilograms lighter, but 50 horsepower more. And we're going to talk a little bit about the car, see it from the outside, from the inside. And we'll also talk to the Lamborghini CEO, Stefan Winkelmann, with an exclusive Autogefühl interview. So here in the workshop, this car is getting ready for its premiere and we are having a sneak preview of it. Some more facts about the car. The acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles an hour is 2.8 seconds, so below 3 seconds. And from 0 to 200 kilometers, it's 8.6 seconds. So what usual cars take from 0 to 100, this car takes from 0 to 200. That's, well... Pretty much crazy and maybe sometime later this year we'll also be able to drive that one. But so far we'll be satisfied with what we see here because that's already spectacular enough for the moment. From the design you see it's really super flat and on the front very aggressive. Had this very edge style here, everywhere where you look. So, so much aggression in this design here. And as we can see from other Lamborghini also which are uh, tilted up here in the workshop. The ground of the car is totally evenly flat that the wind can actually fly through the back of the car in the best possible way. Probably you have already noticed this massive alloys with 21 inch and with a red contrast here from the fixing part in the middle and with huge ceramic disc brakes here in the middle part. The disc brakes are bigger than some wheels of other cars actually. And then what else do we see here? We see where the air is flowing through the engine. That is really also a huge area because this naturally aspirated engine, of course, needs a lot of air to be cooled down then. And then at the side part, we see this SV that is for Super Veloce. And it says here also the model name LP754 SV. That's the total correct model name for this special edition car. And here you can see the small difference, this is a 704, so not the 754 model, so this is not a special edition. See also not 21 inch alloys, but just 21, but still quite big enough. You see there are not so many differences actually.
So let's get inside with this key here, by the way. And yes, it does remind us a little bit of Audi because they are sharing parts, actually. But here it says Lamborghini on the key. And so I can open the car. And of course, we have these wing doors here. Not always an easy entry, but I'll try it for you. And what is different actually to the normal Aventador version is that we're here. First, turn on the ignition. We have this beeping sound away. So the special is that we got these sport bucket seats here. These ones are different to the normal version and they are, of course, way harder. So optimized for the race track, really. So just for usual name riding, I would recommend the usual seat and not the special edition. But these ones are, of course, even better than for the racetrack because, well, they're lighter and offer you even more side support, especially here in the shoulder region. They are, of course, as you can also see from carbon fiber as well, at least parts from it. Then the steering wheel, also racing optimized. You see it's very small and also with this flattened end here, very good grip right and the left and the completely digital instruments here. As we write here now, we are at a yellow background and we see that the RPM meter is in the focus of your attention because on the racetrack speed doesn't matter so much. At least you don't care about how fast you're actually going. It's more about the rev then. This car is, by the way, capable of going over 350 kilometers an hour and may, well, on the street you probably won't ever reach that but maybe on some racetrack or maybe on the South Sea in South America or something like that. So on the rest of the interior, what do we see here? For example, in the center console, we got another element which reminds us a little bit of Audi. And this is this turning knob here with the buttons. It has kind of the same quality as we have, for example, seen in the um, A7 or, so, or other cars. And my favorite element is definitive, definitely here this ignition starter this button here because it has this red cover like in an airplane you can flip it up and then actually turn on the engine and that is actually very exciting and gives you this very emotional feeling. Beside that you see for a rather tall person well it's quite close it's like my, my hair is touching the ceiling already and I'm 1.86 in meters so maybe at 1.90 you start to get problems but then you probably know why also Formula One drivers are usually very small people, so they fit in the race cars. Well, but there's also no panoramic roof, so no other uh, space you can actually spare, so that's definitely it then. And you see it's rather slim out view to the outside then, but that's of course because this car needs this perfect airflow and needs to be very flat that it actually can also be controlled at these kinds of high speeds. So this is a general cockpit overview. I want to hear your opinion on how you like it or maybe not. And also if you compare it to other super sports cars, maybe to the McLarens we have shown you recently. And now let's do the most fun thing about this car. Let's turn on the ignition. Stefan Winkelmann and we're going to talk about the current model, the new model and of course about the general strategy. So about the SV, what can you tell us about the differences from to the normal model and why have you built exactly this model? I mean, wasn't 700 horsepower, wasn't it enough? It's not only about horsepower, so there's always um, space for improvement. This is the first time we're doing a Super Veloce. We started the first time it was with Amura. And we had uh, the Diablo, the last one was the Murcielago. And now uh, with this car, we concentrated on three different uh, items, really to have a package which is the best. The first one and the most important one is the power to weight ratio. So additional horsepower, as you said, from 700 to 750. And uh, reducing weight by adding uh, carbon fiber and also changing the design. And uh, this uh, is coming to a, a power to weight ratio of just two kilos per horsepower. So it's outstanding. It's a very good feeling. 
And then the second item, it's about uh, the aerodynamics. And we improved the downforce by 170%. There's mainly the huge rear wing on there. On yeah, the not only there, the, there's a big diffuser in the back also, and the front changed. So, uh, and uh, this is uh, enabling us to get a downforce which is 170% better than the one of the, of the normal coupe. And the third is about the drivability, so handling. And here we worked on uh, uh, the push rod suspensions with Magnaride for the first time in, in Lamborghini on a 12 cylinder car. And the second is the Lamborghini dynamic steering. So how you steer and uh, how fast you can get in, out and in and out of the corner. And this is very important. And I think the third uh, uh, dimension was a bit missing in all the other cars we made before in the Super Veloces. And because it's not only about being fast and being, and being very uh, easy to drive, but also about handling and about uh, how the car is glued to the road. Is it actually still usable for everyday riding or would you rather recommend the normal Aventador version then? No, no, the car is perfect for the daily use. Uh, it's very easy to drive. We had uh, uh, rides on the road, on normal road and uh, on, the test, uh, on the racetrack. And for us, I think it, there's a big improvement in both ways. And uh, we are only going to build the car 600 times and they're almost sold out. So if I still want to get one, what's the price? So 328,000 euros plus VAT, depending on the market. But for example, now we're here in, here in Germany at 389, uh, including the VAT. So about the general model strategy, you maybe already know Lamborghini will build an SUV. And well, a lot of people wonder about it. Is it the right decision? Where is Lamborghini heading to? So true fans already had some criticism, okay, maybe Lamborghini is losing its DNA, or how want to, do you want to cope with that when still building the SUV? But you know, Lamborghini uh, is famous for the super sports car, but in the history we have not only done super sports car. It was the 350 GT, which was the real, the first uh, Lamborghini which was built in, in serious production. So this was a GT car, Gran Turismo. Uh, we had the car like the, the Espada, which was a 2 plus 2. We had the LM and other cars which are more likely not to be super sports cars. In the last 20 years or so, we only did super sports cars and this was the right direction and the right decision to establish the brand and to change really uh, the thing to have a clear understanding for us and for the customer. We believe there is much more in a Lamborghini than just Aventador and Huracan. And therefore, already since uh, years, we are discussing the opportunity of a third model. And uh, this SUV, we think, is a perfect fit, both because it's a very uh, big segment, which is expanding worldwide. It's very well distributed in the major regions of this world. And it's the most emotional one if it comes to four doors. So we think it's feasible. And there was the the ancestor of all the luxury SUVs was done by Lamborghini, which was the LM. Can you tell us any more details already about the SUV or what is official yet? What can you say? What can we expect of the car? But what I can tell you is that the car is going to be launched in three years from now. So in, uh, in the middle of 2018, this is the idea actually. But more than this, uh, I cannot tell you. We are very happy because we are uh, going to produce the car in Italy. So we will have uh, uh, three models all Uh, produced in San Daga da Bologna, where our hometown is, and this is the perfect thing, and the made in Italy, the passion, the professionality of our people are underlining that this is a good choice. Will it be rather an entry model to the world of Lamborghini that sits below the others, just from, from the price? Will it open mm. the car, the, like, let's say, the brand for new customers, or do you want to more focus on existing customers? Uh, first of all, we want to have more customers than today. Uh, we have a lot of people which are willing to buy a Lamborghini, but maybe they, uh, they don't see uh, the super sports car as something which is fitting to their daily life and to their ha um, habits. So uh, they want a Lamborghini. And uh, we are thinking about more or less 3,000 cars for the SUV, which means more than doubling the production, because last year we had a record year of 2,530 cars um, delivered to customers. The price point will be more or less on the level of the, of the Huracan, so around about 180,000. Okay, so it will be on the equal level, so let's say 
it's not like lower below that, so it might be the same entry level for both cars. And More or less. This is not decided, but we are not uh, looking for, uh, let's say, a cheap car or something, yeah, sure, which is... Sure. Uh, which is uh, no, we are looking for a very exclusive. It should be then the super sports car amongst the SUVs. And as I said, if you look into the volumes worldwide, uh, they are sold, last year they were sold 72 million passenger cars. And uh, if we do 3,000 SUVs with the brand Lamborghini, there will be no, let's say, diluting of the brand. Mm. So what um, comes more and more up is that you also combine sustainability with luxury. How does Lamborghini cope with that, actually? Thinking of hybrid engines and also maybe less consumption, thinking about the environment, because you can nowadays not only give the super sports and the luxury without paying attention to that. Uh, we, are, we are playing in, in both fields. On the, in the production side, so on the headquarters side, uh, we are going to be CO2 neutral by the end of this year, by the middle of this year, and we will announce this shortly. And in terms of the cars, because we believe this is important too, we, uh, in the last years we reduced by 25% the CO2 emissions, but we have to find a balance between what the DNA of the, of the brand is and uh, the need of, of the legislator and the customer to be compliant uh, with the laws. So we will do everything to maintain this balance of a real super sports car by reducing and the, the, the emissions. One of the things is the power, and the other thing which is important is the weight of the car, which is helping. So we are looking into everything. We had the Asterion in uh, Paris at the Motor Show, which was uh, a showcase uh, how a possible uh, plug-in hybrid of Lamborghini could look like. Today it's a bit early to talk about this, but we have a lot of plans and a lot of ideas. Okay, so I think we take it, it might be possible that we also see the plug-in hybrid with the new SUV. And thank you very much for the interview. You're and welcome. Thank you also for watching. See you at the next article episode.